Now let's see what happens if we hybridize a s orbital and an individual p orbital. What we get is an sp hybridized orbital. Going back to the carbon atom, we know the valence electrons are either going to be in an s orbital or one of three individual p orbitals. So when we create our sp hybridization, two of those orbitals will become sp hybridized orbitals. The other two, which are p orbitals, remain untouched and stay as p orbitals. Now, how are these orbitals arranged around the carbon? Well, the p orbitals are 90 degrees to each other, and the sp hybridized orbitals are 90 degrees to the p orbital. Each sp hybridized orbital is 180 degrees to the other sp hybridized orbital. When we have two of these sp hybridized carbons brought together to make bonds, we can observe what happens in the chemical ethyne. Ethyne is also known as acetylene, which is used in acetylene torches. You'll see that the two sp hybridized orbitals, one on each of the carbons, come together to create a sigma bond. Also, on each carbon, we have two p orbitals. So as the two carbons come together, we will create two pi bonds. Notice that one pi bond is above and below. The other pi bond is forwards and backwards. We can also draw this molecule in Kekulé form. Notice that we draw three lines between the two carbon atoms. This is called a triple bond. One of the lines represents the sigma bond. The other two lines represent the pi bond. Notice that the angle between the carbon and the hydrogen, which is one of the sp hybridized orbitals, is at 180 degrees to the carbon-carbon bond. Remember, that's being caused by another sp hybridized orbital. So that matches what we talked about earlier. The distance between the hydrogen and the carbon is also important to notice. This is 106 picometers. When we were talking about methane that had an sp3 hybridized carbon, that same distance was 110 picometers. So it seems that the sp hybridized carbon produces shorter bonds than the sp3 hybridized carbon. We will see if this trend continues. Let's take a look at the triple bond distance between the two carbon atoms. This distance is 120 picometers. What we have is a linear molecule with a short, and as a result, very strong bond.